Hi there. We're going to look at Access, beginning an Access database. So the database that we're going to create is a customer's database, just a basic one, just to get you started. But of course, there's different things that go through making a database, and one of which is the planning stage. Let me uh, show you what I mean. Okay, here I've got a mind map that I created earlier on a fantastic app I found on my phone here. Uh, created a PDF out of it. And it just gives you an idea of what you might think about before you start creating a database. Now, I don't want to go too much in this. There's plenty that's been written about planning a database. But let's just have a quick look at a few of these features here. Uh, just going to zoom in a little bit here. So if I just zoom in on this section, just pan around a little bit. So the first part is the initial stages of looking at a database. Uh, firstly, is the purpose of the database. So basically, what do you want the database to do? And so to bear that in mind, let's just be, you want to be very general with this bit here. You want to look at a statement of purpose, basically a couple of sentences that will describe what you want the database to do, um, what you want to get out of the database, how you know, that just general things like that. Obviously, if you don't add something into a database, you can't get that information out. Next stage I've got here is how you can use it practically. And that's another thing you need to take into account. So is it going to be a database that's going to be used um, maybe by somebody on the telephone, some sort of telemarketing system where it needs to access quickly? Or are you able to access it um, basically just on your um, on your computer at your own leisure? You don't actually have to think too much about how you need to put the data in. Uh, are you going to use the database or are other people going to use the database? If other people are going to use the database, do they know about databases? It's all that type of thing you need to plan um, there. So moving on, we work out the previous info uh, as well. So here we got sort of uh, <clears throat> maybe the pre-passed data. So things, a data that's already separated that can be imported into your database. Do you have data in Excel files, other databases, Word, comma separated values? or maybe even from another website. And of course, it's always good to get um, experience, you know, people who are used to the industry. So to give you an example, this week I was training Access, at a company in Northampton, in Welling, Rushton actually, and they made plastic containers. Now, I don't know anything about the plastic container industry, making containers for different oil bottles and, and um like soap bottles and then you know the little sort of soap dispensers that you get so they were making those bottles and they just needed to track the different types of salespeople, um the different types of contacts they would have the different types of designers uh, and also the different types of bottles as well injection molding molding blow uh, molding thermoforming it is there was so much to learn there but this bit here the planning bit is very important after you've decided on that uh, over here on the creation side of things, basically databases are made out of four primary tools. So we've got tables. Uh, we'll just make that full screen here. Okie dokie. Oops, so just go in there. There we go. So you've got tables, which consist of field and relationships. So you'd list all your fields. This is what we're just going to do right now. Then keep an eye out for more videos where we'll cover queries and we'll do forms as well to get data into your uh, tables and to get people to enter data into your database into your tables and finally we'll do reports about getting information out of your database there we go so we've got uh, a lot to cover so uh, let's have a look and see if we can get started so here we go i've got access here on my screen as you can see at the top just going to zoom in so you can you can see that there notice i've got another couple of tools here that might be handy having a look at we do training courses on this power bi and we have that tool there and of course we have excel sometimes people overkill things sometimes they don't actually need a database but they uh you just need to manage data they just need to enter a simple amount of data so maybe one of these tools will do but let's double click on access to start off our database shall we you have a drink of coffee Excellent. So what we're going to do here is just create a blank database. Now, there's many other types of databases you can see here. If I just, um, just zoom in a bit, you can see all the different types of databases, blank database, asset tracking contacts. Uh, there's a lot going on there. But 
really we're going to do a blank database. So I'm going to click on blank database. Now the first thing that's peculiar about an access database you do is you save it. So you ask it's asking, well, where do you want the database? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my browse button here and just I'm going to put this on my desktop. I'll create a new folder. I'm going to call this one access training. There we go. And then the database itself, because I might use this online, I might connect it, I might use it in any sort of other applications, a good practice that I use is lowercase is no spaces for all file names, field names, and also I, I'm particularly have naming pro protocols for object names like tables and forms and queries, etc. So to give you an idea, I'm going to call this one customer underscore orders. Let me just zoom in so you can see what I've um, done that there. So you see there, I've used an underscore instead of a space. And in that way, if I'm ever using it on a technology that don't like spaces, such as a web technology, I don't get that percentage to zero and I minimize the risk of an error happening when it's trying to connect to this table. Great, so I click on OK and you can see customer orders is here. I'm going to click on create and now we have our database, our first table. In fact, this is a database. It's got nothing in it, but it is a database. Now, what Access does automatically, as you can see here, it's created our first table at the top. But we don't want that. We're going to create one from scratch. So what I'm going to get you to do is just, if you right-click on the Table tab here at the top, uh, you're just going to click on Close to close off the table. It hasn't saved the table at all, so we're ready to start doing something completely from scratch. Now, when you're creating tables, there's a few rules that you need to think of. Um, now, I'm not going to go into all the details of that, but things will become obvious, especially with the next video when we talk about creating relationships. So keep posted for this video. Make sure you subscribe as well so that when the next video comes out, you don't miss it and you can follow along with this series. So let's get started. We're going to click on the Create button here at the top. So if we click on Create, and then we're going to click on and as you can see here, there's lots of different types of table options here. So you've got the tables, the queries, the forms, all those different things here. We're interested in the table design view. So if you can remember, when you're creating a table, it's best to go into the design view of the table. So let's give that a click. So we've got table design view. Now we're in the design view here. We've got a list of fields you can see on that left-hand side. We need to start typing in information that would pertain to the customer. Now, we haven't got a fully exhaustive list here. We're just going to see what we can uh, type in. So the first thing I'm going to enter in is the uh, company. Because we're dealing with companies, I just want to know the company. Now, I don't know if you can see here, there's a little drop-down list that says data type. So there we go. So there's the data type drop-down list. Now, if you're used to Excel, you think, well, what the hell does that mean? Well, basically, Access is like Excel on steroids, or OCD, basically. What it needs to know beforehand is the type of data that you are uh, you are storing. So nine times out of 10, it's gonna be short text. It could be a number uh, as well. That's another option here. You've got different types of numbers to store or a large number, date, time. Well, you get the idea. There's the different types of data types that are available. So with the company, I have short text. Now in the wide box to the right hand side, you can see this bit here. It says I've got a description. It's optional. This is an optional description. So if I want to type something that maybe make it clear, so I could say something along the lines of leave blank if a company doesn't exist. You know, so if it's an individual or whatever, I'm not actually dealing with a company. I need to make, put, I could put a little reminder to leave it blank. Or I could put a little reminder to maybe check that field to see if it's the information within that field has been accurately entered. Things like that. So let's type some other names in and we'll just try to break down the names into its smallest meaningful value, which I call the field names. We want to break down into their smallest meaningful value. So what do I mean by that? Well, we could put person's underscore name. But the problem is, is if, say, for instance, you want to do a lot of searches on surnames, you just make that a little bit more hard for you, difficult for yourself because you've got to sort of split the first name from the from the surname, from the last name. Now, it is possible to do that, but why make 
um, it hard for yourself. Make, why make it difficult? So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to type in first underscore name, and short text, and last underscore name. There we go. So here we go. So this is here. This is the contact here. Now it's interesting um, with this here. We've got first name and last name. This allows us to record one person per company. Now we'll talk about in a future video how we can use relationships so that we can record many people or many employees per company. So we can develop it from there. Let's have a think of other things that you might need for company. Now let's just think about the same issue. If I type in address, you know, I could bung in the whole address in one address field. But again, I've got the same issue. If I want to search by postcode, for instance, or if I want to search by a street name or anything like that at all, I'm making it difficult for myself. I'm making work for myself. So what I need to do is split it up. So I'm going to address one for the first one. I'm going to do address two. So the address one could be the street name plus the house number. Uh, I'm pressing tab to move across there. Uh, let's say, for instance, the address two is an area. I'm going to use city. Uh, I'm going to put a little note can be used for town or city. So in that way there, I um, I could use this for town or city or village or whatever. It's got to be consistent. And interestingly enough, the name of the fields, you don't have to see them when you come to making your pretty reports or your forms or viewing the data. But city will be the name of that field. I'll then type in county, if I'm interested in that, if it's in England there, um, use the county or I could use an area and, and I can use postcode as well. Brilliant. So let's just type in some other details. Maybe you want the phone number. So what I'll do is I'll call this, uh, I'll type in phone underscore number. Now all of these data types so far have been short text. But if I click right down the drop down list here, you may be fooled into thinking that phone number is number, but it's not. When we think about it, when you think about it, a phone number is just a reference. That all it is. That's all it is. It's a reference number, so we can type in, you know, o two o or o eight hundred one five eight three five double eight. That's all it is. So, it's just short text in this case here. So phone number being short text, and we can type in email uh, address, and I tell you what, we'll type in website as well. Now what we need to do here is type in all the information that directly pertains or relates to the company. If we start putting in things like orders, company orders or sales or products that this company uh, has bought, then we are going to be backing ourselves into a corner. Let's give an example of why that might be the case. Firstly, we need to give this table a unique identity. You see, we've got company at the top and we could say, well, you know, we could identify each company by the company name. However, I, we are computer tutoring. I'm sure there's many other companies that are called computer tutoring around the world. Uh, and whatever your company is or whatever you're looking or whatever your customers are, I'm sure you've got two companies of the same name. So we can't use the company field to uniquely identify each company. What about first name and last name? Well, we can't use that. I'm sure there's more than one person called Simon in the world. Uh, so we can't use that name. So we need to create a unique identity. So if we right click on Tump Company Name and then go down to and click on Insert Rows, so it adds in Insert Rows, I'm going to call this one Customer ID. Now, because this is abbreviation, I use a capital I's and D's for the abbreviation there. And the data type I'm going to use is Auto Number. Now, I'm using an Auto Number. And what an auto number does is it automatically assigns a number to the customer ID. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Don't uh, be too worried. If you say, for instance, you've got your own numbers, you can use that as well. But because I don't have my own numbers, or I don't already have my unique IDs for customers, I am creating this database from scratch. I'm just going to put an auto number. And the last thing I need to do is I need to click on this primary key button just in the top left hand corner so I can click on the primary key button just up there alternatively I can also right click on the row for customer ID and there you can see I've got primary key just there brilliant so I'll do it with right click and go to primary key 
Now what that primary key does, auto number will assign a unique number to that field. Primary key will ensure that that number can never be duplicated. So once number one has been put in, I can never type in another one for a company name. So that ensures that I don't get erroneous data within my database. I don't get a mix up between my customers because there's two customers with the ID number one. So finally, before we end this video, let's save this one and have a quick look at what we mean, uh, how the data will look. So click on this save button at the very top left hand corner, you can see here, or you can click on the save button, that will then save the database object. And for the name of the object, I'm calling it TBL customers. So TBL customers, I'll zoom in so you can see, there we go. So lowercase TBL for the abbreviation for the object name. So in this case, it's a table. So I'm calling it TBL for table and then customers, capital C for customers. This is a naming protocol known as camel case. Uh, many different developers use this. Uh, I quite like it. it. It differentiates the tables from other fields and on other objects as well. And you can do the same with forms, etc. Click on OK. We can see our table appears over here on the left hand side. So there's our table customers. So now we're going to go to data sheet view. Now, if you look up in the top left hand corner, you can see there's a little view button. I could just click on this button here and it will swap me immediately to data sheet view. Or I could click on the drop down list and choose on data sheet view here. So if you wanted to go back to design view, you would click on design view here. If you wanted to enter data into the table just to test it out, you would use data sheet view there. So what I'm going to do is if I click on the data sheet view, this looks more like the Excel spreadsheet that we know and love, isn't it? It's got the column headers across the top. They are known as field names. Notice the new bit here in customer ID. You see there? That is because a number will automatically be assigned to the customer ID. Uh, so let's start typing in data. So let's have a look at the first company. So the first company I'm going to type in information for is Acme. There we go. And then we'll type in Mickey Mouse. And we can type in address 39 Disney Boulevard, Disneyland, there we go. So county doesn't exist, but there's a state. So I'm going to put Florida. I've got postcode. It doesn't exist, but I can put a zip code. Phone number. Uh, I can put anything I want in the phone number there. Email address. And the website. Brilliant. Excellent. So let's just have a little introduction to creating another table in a relationship. We'll continue this on a further video. So please subscribe and see because, um, why it's beneficial. But just to give you a teaser of why it's special, say for instance, I wanted to um, record the orders or the sales for Mickey Mouse. So I'd go back to design view by clicking on the design view at the bottom. And then I'm just going to put product ordered and that's going to be short text there we go that's short text i go back to data sheet view it reminds me to save the table which i do and then i put in here uh, eggs there we go so now the problem is is if mickey mouse wanted to order cheese to be able to keep the data um in the right structure i would have to type in acme mickey mouse 39 uh, Boulevard, Disneyland, oh, I spelled Disneyland wrong there, let's put Y in, that's it. Florida, all again, all just to record some cheese. It's crazy, and then if they went back and ordered some bread, I'd have to do another row for bread, and another row or record for crisps or beer. If Mickey Mouse drinks beer, I don't know. That's just crazy. So what you would do is you would use relationships to split up the data. So we're going to look at that with the next video. So don't forget to subscribe. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll be seeing you when we talk about tables and relationships. Thank you so much for watching.